Greetings, YouTubers, and welcome to my 51st TTM video, where today I will share with you three TTMs that I got in the mail. Yes, three. That's a good day. Been slow this week and last week. One pickup, and also two RTSs, two return to senders, and a couple of shout-outs as well. So I hope everybody's doing well, and everybody is fine. And having a good time. Uh, I've been a while since I put out a video, but I've uh, been watching p many people as I can in between work and all that. So, let's start with some shout outs to some fine channels. Hopefully, you've subscribed to them. If not, give them a check. First one is HOF Minor. A little closer there. He's got a great channel. Give him a check. Another one, many of you probably subscribe to, but Check them out. Flying Dutchman Cards. Also, gives a lot of giveaways. I'm going to give them a look-see. Third one is one that many of you have subscribed to, but if you haven't, give them a look. Poor Man Stack. He does not only cards, but he does coins. Really great channel also. And number four channel here, check out Bourbon Breaks. I just subscribed to them recently. And, oops, sorry. They do a great job as well. So four great channels, as I like to do four for the uh, shout-outs. And now, let's start with the return to senders. Yes, as Elvis said, return to sender. First one came back. Uh, this is from Rick Upchurch. Mr. Upchurch, Denver performer Denver Bronco. Not at this address he wrote on, which... People have gotten a few returns from him lately, but maybe he's just tired of signing. I'm not going to get mad because a lot of these folks are getting overwhelmed with mail and they just don't want to sign anymore, so I can't argue with that. This next one, uh, some of you may have gotten, some of you may not have. It's official, though. Rocky Blyer sent me this letter. I sent him last year when I first started, and he sent the letter back saying he wasn't signing due to COVID. Now... He's sending a letter back saying that he received my items and my request for an autograph. Unfortunately, he will no longer be autographing items that he receives through the mail. I thank you for your understanding, and more importantly, I thank you for being a fan. My best to you always, Rocky Blyer. And I'm not going to get mad at Rocky. He was a great TTMer for a long time. Here's a guy who's probably gotten tons of stuff at his house, and... Not even going to argue with that because it, it's a lot. This COVID thing has really hurt the uh, TTM community. As first uh, one I'll get into is a contest I won a while ago, and I've just been backed up with things, but I want to give this person his due. He's got a super channel. Many of you know who he is, and that is a gentleman up in Canada, good man. Good buddy, Sticks G. Won a contest. What did I get? I got some super, super uh, cards, and I will show you the first one. Get the green tape off. I bought some green tape to uh, honor my Canadian friends up there. So, just bought some recently. What did I get? I got a cool Nelson Cruz card there. Stick him up. There you go. Nelson Cruz. I like that. Got a great Chris Davis of the Oakland A's, Athletics, however you want to call it, and from the Arizona Diamondbacks, Mr. Jake Lamb. But that wasn't all. As I got a few more here. Take off the old green tape. Got Mr. Josh Bell, who is no longer with the Pittsburgh Pirates, now with the Nationals. So, well, that's a cool card. Rookie card, too. I like that. And we also picked up from him Mr. Antonio Senzata. I said that. Senzata. I forget it. <laughs> I got Antonio's card. Rookie card from the Rockies. And I got this cool one. Yes, one of my favorites. Yankee Stadium. And get that going there. From the Yankees. And he was nice enough to put in his hockey card. My favorite hockey player currently, Patrick Kane. The one and only Patrick Kane. I'm messing up here. 
as my good friend Slapnuts would say. Look at that sexy jersey. It's a nice jersey. I won't argue that. <laughs> and not one, but two Patrick Kane. So that was awesome. Great contest. He sent a uh, great note there. Hope you enjoy these. I do. Very much do. Always like to get Patrick Kane's. I don't have that many. And they did arrive safely, so... I appreciate it, Sticks. Corey up there in Canada, he's great. If you haven't checked out his channel, you're missing stuff. He does great rips. He does cards he makes. I mean, you check him out as well. Uh, little something extra, because Canadians are in my wife's blood. Yes, her grandmother was from Canada. The uh, Quebec part. My oldest son's godmother is living in... Just outside Toronto, so I got a lot of connections to Canada right there. So thank you, Sticks. And we'll start off with the first uh, thing. That was a pickup to add to my uh, program collection here League Championship programs. This is from the 1980 AL Championship, the Yankees versus the Royals, and this is the Kansas City Royal one. I like it with all the players on it. And it's got George Brett way up top and uh, Dan Quisenberry. Kind of hard to see up there, but move it down, move it down just a tad. And Royals won that uh, playoff. Go on and play the Phillies in the World Series. They didn't win, but beat my Yankees. And I got the Yankee one with Thurman Munson on, so completed that. Now to the returns. This first one I got. 21 days. There was no fee. Came all the way from Michigan. And this is a hockey player, folks. Yes, hockey time. Got him on this card with the Canadians, and that's Mr. Red Berenson. He signed that, and he also signed the index card for me as well. Wearing that Canadians jersey, and that reminded me of something I just saw this week. I watched it with my sons. It was a cartoon I saw when I was eight years old. I'm going off on a tangent. I'm sorry. I was eight back in 1980, and it was a cartoon I saw that was made in Canada, but they showed it here in the United States. It was called The Sweater. If you ever get a chance to see it, watch it. It's, it's really good. Um, it's about a young man in late 1940s Quebec, and everybody who plays hockey there, all him and all his friends, wear red jerseys of the Canadians, and it's all Maurice Richard jerseys, and they love it. The local priest is the referee, and then one day his sweater, as he calls it, is got holes in it, it's old, it doesn't fit well, so his mother, who doesn't speak any English, writes Mr. Eaton of Eaton's Department Store, and sends him three dollars, all written in French, for a new sweater. And he gets it. And it's not the red jersey of the Canadians. No, it's the blue jersey of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And he has a fit, and his mother won't send it back. The kids just get on him about it. He gets upset in a hockey game, smashes his stick, and the priest makes him go to church and pray. And he does. He prays for moths to eat his jersey. So it's a real good one. But I got off that for this. But that's a good story. Watch it. Uh, Mr. Berenson, Gordon Arthur Berenson, better known as Red, born on December 8th, 1939. He's 81. He was born in Regina, I think it says Regina, Regina, uh, Canada, the capital of Saskatchewan. He played junior uh, ice hockey with the Regina Pats, or Regina Pats, whatever. Hopefully I'm saying it right one way. Uh, he played his college, though, at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. He graduated from Michigan's School of Business. He was also an All-American in uh, hockey there at Michigan and led the National uh, NCAA National Collegiate Athletic Association with 43 goals in his final year of eligibility. That was the 1961 season. He signed with the Montreal Canadiens and played uh, with the Canadiens in 1960, or I should say played in hockey. Oof, excuse me, old man. Played his hockey career from 1961 to 78. He played with Montreal, the New York Rangers, the Detroit Red, Wing, Red Wings, and on two occasions with the St. Louis Blues. He won a Stanley Cup with the uh, Canadians in 1965 as a member of that team. But in 1966, uh, he was traded to the New York Rangers. And then seven weeks into the 1967 season, 1967-68 season, he was traded to the St. Louis Blues. And that's where he really shined. He led St. Louis to three straight Stanley Cup finals. They didn't win. Uh, each of those years, he was named the Western Division's best player by his peers. 
but his best game ever came on November 7, 1968, against the Philadelphia Flyers at the Philadelphia Spectrum. Berenson scored six goals in that game, including four over a nine-minute span. He was the first player to score a double hat-trick on a road game. The six-goal total was one shy of the all-time NHL record set by Joe Malone in 1920, and this has only been accomplished once since then. In 1970, he was named the uh, St. Louis Blues captain. And then at the age of 31, St. Louis, in 1974, I believe, traded him to the Detroit Red Wings because they felt they wanted to trade him while his skills were still good, and they can only decline, so they got rid of him. Sort of an Al Davis type thing used to do with the Raiders, get rid of him before they get bad. But... uh, so that's where he went and ended up playing uh, with the Blues for his last few seasons. He went back. He did play in the eight-game Summit Series for Team Canada against the Soviet Union in 1972. In his career, he played 17 seasons. He scored 261 goals, had 397 assists in 987 games. In 1978, after he retired, he rejoined the Blues coaching staff as an assistant. And then uh, he became head, head coach, excuse me, head coach, midway through the 79-80 season. A year later, he won the NHL Coach of the Year Award, the Jack Adams Award. In 1984, however, he returned to Ann Arbor as the head coach of the Michigan hockey team. He coached there for just a total of 33 seasons, led Michigan to 11 Frozen Four appearances. It's like the equivalent of the NCAA Basketball Final Four, their version of March Madness. They won the NCAA championship in 1996 and 1998. His team, Michigan, qualified for 22 consecutive NCAA tournament appearances. This is the longest streak ever in college hockey history. On January 10, 2015, he became the fourth coach in Division I history to win 800 games. He retired from Michigan in 2017. For his career, he was a six-time NHL All-Star. His... um, record in the pros as a coach was 100 wins, 72 losses, and 32 ties. In college, he won 848 games, 246 losses with 92 ties. And in the NCAA tournaments, he was 30 and 23. He's a member of the University of Michigan Athletic Hall of Fame, or Hall of Honor, I should say, the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame, the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame, the Saskatchewan Hall of Fame, Canada Sports Hall of Fame, and the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. So, Mr. Red Berenson took a while, but three weeks is not bad. He signed both. I thank you. If you haven't gotten them, you're a Canadians fan, send to them. If you're not, send to them anyway. You know, you like hockey. Great player, great coach at Michigan there. This next one came from Pennsylvania. It took eight days. There was no fee. This guy won five Super Bowls. Yes, five. That's Mr. Dick Hoke. Signed this nice 8x10 for me. Even included the five-time Super Bowl champs, which I asked him to do on the bottom there. Very nice of him. Richard John Hoke, known as Dick. Born on December 8, 1939. He's 81. He was born in Jeanette, Pennsylvania. He went to Penn State University from 1958 to 61. He was a running back for the Nittany Lions. And he was the Nittany Lions' most valuable player his senior year. He graduated from Penn State with a bachelor's degree in social studies. In the 1961 NFL Draft, he was selected in the seventh round with the 90th pick by the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that he would always be associated with. His career in the NFL lasted from 1961 to 70, all with the Steelers. He rushed for a total of 3,965 yards, about 3.5 a carry, on 1,132 attempts and scored 25 touchdowns. Out of the backfield, he had 146 receptions, 1,452 receiving yards, about 9.9 a catch, and 8 touchdowns. He led the Steelers in rushing three times, and after he retired, after 1970, he retired as the Steelers' number two all-time rusher. He is currently, I believe, fifth on the Steelers' all-time rushing list. In 1972, Chuck Knoll hired him as the running backs coach. He served in that position for a long time. 35 years as a coach with the other uh, Steelers. He served, I believe, with 20 with Chuck Knoll. 
He uh, passed on the head coaching job when it was offered to him with the United States Football League's Pittsburgh Maulers. During his time with the Steelers, uh, they rushed for a total of over, I should say, rushed for over 30,000 yards while he was their running backs coach. The uh, Steelers led the league in rushing three times. He coached guys like Franco Harris and Jerome Bettis who are in the Hall of Fame. On January 1st, 2007, he announced his retirement after 45 seasons with the Steelers. 10 as a player, 35 as a running backs coach. He was the only coach to work for both Chuck Knoll and Bill Cower. He'd been a Steeler for 742 of the franchise's 1,057 games and had been involved in every title game and playoff victory up to that point in his career with the Steelers. He made one Pro Bowl in his career as a running back in 1968, and again, five times as a Super Bowl champ as the running backs coach with the Steelers. And he's a member of the Pittsburgh Pro Football Hall of Fame. So, great uh, coach who probably should get some Hall of Fame consideration. I know they don't like to put in assistance, but that, that's you know that's impressive what he did as a coach. Again, uh, Dick Coke, great signer, and there was no fee. This next one came from Pennsylvania as well. Took 17 days. And I did donate money. Uh, he does charge. And I did send. This is the most I think I've ever sent for a, a baseball. But hey, you know, he charges a lot at shows, or he gets a lot at shows. And she donated $40 to get Bill Mazarowski. And he put on the ball 1960 World Series champs, like I asked. Thank you to add to the World Series collection of the Pirates. I do have him on a Hall of Fame ball, so that's why I could get him on that. Uh, William Stanley Mazarowski, better known as Bill, was born on September 5th, 1936 in Wheeling, West Virginia. Shout out to Michael Myers of West Virginia there. Mr. Mazarowski is 84, but Bill grew up in grew up as a Cleveland Indians fan in Rush Run, Ohio, in old Jefferson County there. He attended Warren Consolidated High School in Tiltonsville, Ohio, where he played baseball and basketball. He started on the varsity baseball team as a freshman and was named to the All-Ohio State uh, basketball team as a senior. He turned down scholarships from schools like Duquesne, Ohio State, and West Virginia, all athletic scholarships to pursue a career in pro baseball. In 1954, at the age of 17, Maz signed with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He originally was signed as a shortstop, but eventually moved to second base. He made his Major League debut on July 7, 1956 against the New York Giants at the Polo Grounds. In his first plate appearance against pitcher Johnny Antonelli, his first appearance he got a hit, a base hit. His career in Major League uh, Baseball would go from 1956 to 72, all with the Pirates. As a rookie, Massaw's batting average go below 200 around mid-August and manager Bobby Bragan dropped him to last in the batting order for about 10 games. I don't think he got along too well with the coach, or many players did, but in August 1957, Bobby Bragan was let go, and Danny Murtaugh was named the manager of the Pirates, and that changed everything. Maz and the Pirates showed immediate and steady improvement. In 1958, the Bucks shocked everybody by finishing second behind the... Um, the Braves, the Milwaukee Braves, who I believe were the defending world champs, but they lost to the Yankees that year. Maz made his uh, first all-star team that year. He hit 19 homers, drove in 69 runs, and earned his first gold glove. His most famous moment, though, October 13, 1960. Forbes Field, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Game 7 of the World Series, tied at 9-9. At 3.36 p.m., On Ralph Terry's second pitch, Maz slammed a high fastball just to the left of the 406-foot marker in distant left center field. The home run gave the Pirates their first World Series title in 35 years, and it set off a celebration that lasted for days in the Steel City. And Maz became an instant hero. Very famous picture of him rounding the base, trying to get past those fans. A 14-year-old boy by the name of Andy Jerpy retrieved the ball amid the cherry trees in uh, Shenley Park. Maz did sign the ball for the kid in the clubhouse after the game, but old Andy lost the ball during a neighborhood game a short time after that, so lost a piece of history. This remains the only walk-off home run to decide a Game 7 in World Series history. Yes, Joe Carter hit one, but that was in Game 6. 
Pirate broadcaster uh, Bob Prince called him the glove. And future Hall of Famer Joe Morgan called him the gold standard for infield defense. Bill Mazeroski's lifetime average was 260, had 2,016 hits, 138 homers, 853 runs batted in, 10 times an All-Star, two times he was a World Series champ, 1960 and again in 1971, eight times was a Gold Glove winner, made the Polish-American uh, Sports Hall of Fame, and in 2001 was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. In 1995, six years before he was elected to the Hall of Fame, columnist George Will said the exclusion of Mazarowski from Cooperstown is a simple case of discrimination against defensive skills. And there was a big hoo-ha when he was elected by the Veterans Committee. They had this ridiculous arguments that he shouldn't have gotten in. The voting was this and that, so they had to change all the voting. They were nuts. This guy deserved to get in. Willie Stargell summed it up best while he was alive, saying that Bill Mazarowski saved more runs than he drove in. And if that doesn't get you in the Hall of Fame, what does? A portion of the brick wall from Forbes Field remains at the University of Pittsburgh campus in the Oakland district there. And Bill Mazeroski had a cameo in the 1968 movie The Odd Couple. In 1987, he ran for the Democratic nomination for county commissioner of Westmoreland County, PA, but was unsuccessful. So he does charge, I think it's $10 a card. But for this ball, I really wanted it, and it was a good price, I thought. So, hey, why not? So I want to thank Mr. Mazeroski, uh, Mr. Berenson, Mr. Hoke, Mr. Sticks G for the great cards as well. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I enjoy watching all your videos. Uh, if you like, hit the like button. You want to leave some comments? Leave them. I'll get back to you. I love trying to get back to everybody as best I can. If uh, you're new and you like it, hit the subscribe button. If you didn't like it and you're new, hit the subscribe button anyway. Maybe I'll have something you like down the line. Uh, let's be, you know, kind to each other out there. One person is a time I like to say, everybody, you know, pass it on one person, and before you know it, everybody's going to be happy. So, uh, everybody take care. I hope you're all staying safe. Thanks for watching, and tonight we say good night to the great state of South Dakota.